and see if it floats. See what happens. pretty much empty. All right, so we're back in the office now with our RC boat, and before I sign off, I just wanted to give a couple of comments on how the build went and the initial trial run for our RC boat by Sergi2484. So the build itself is actually pretty simple. You just glue all these pieces together here with a little bit of CA glue. The pieces did go together pretty easily, but there were no tabs or anything to align the different sections, and it would have made things just a little bit easier. The rear components all screw on, and then you can use a bit of silicone in there to help to seal everything. Uh, the designer had in mind that you would actually screw these on before you glue the different sections of the hull together. And I didn't realize that, so I had a bit of trouble getting uh, these screws secured. So what I ended up doing was sizing up these ones here. Uh, so instead of M3, I used M4, so they would thread themselves into the plastic. I didn't use any nuts on the inside, because I couldn't get them in there. Right in here behind this wall is where they would go. And then I secured the little plates in place for good with some E6000 glue. The motor I'm using is a 3650 with a 3100 kV, whereas the designer recommends a 4300 kV, so it's probably a little bit slower than his. I don't have my water cooling set up just yet because the water jackets that I have on hand are a little bit too big for this motor. So it's probably a good thing that I'm running a lower kV until I get the water cooling installed. The water cooling itself is going to run off of this nipple right here. Uh, water will flow in through the rudder, up through the snipple. It'll come up through a hose into the back here, wind itself around the motor, and then probably out the side right here. The battery I'm using is one of these 5000 milliamp hour 3S LiPos with a 50C discharge rate. And the performance I got was pretty good, although I'm probably going to try and go a bit faster in the future. Now the motor mount is not actually glued in place, it's just friction set in there, and that's probably not a great idea. So I should probably at least hot glue that down for the next run. This is the first time I've ever installed one of these metal drive shafts, and it worked pretty good. I had a bit of trouble installing it in this 3D printed piece here, uh, but a little bit of persuasion with a mallet helped it go through. I did put a bit of lithium grease inside this uh, metal jacket here and I think that did help everything move a bit smoother and I think adding lithium grease in there also helps a bit with the water sealing. The prop I was using initially was a 36 millimeter prop that came with the drive shaft and it worked fine. This is a 38 millimeter one that I've replaced it with so I'll try this slightly larger one next time see if I can get just a little bit more speed. One issue I did have was that I set the ESC so that I could go in reverse and without locking on or gluing on your prop knot at the end here um, it did unthread itself quite quickly, so that's something to think about. If you're not going to be locking that on, you probably want to disable reverse on your ESC. The ESC that I'm using is this Fly Color 90 Amp Brushless ESC. 
which is meant for RC boats and seems to work great, and it does have an integrated cooling jacket if you want to hook that up too. The steering seemed to work great, and it's just a super simple setup. I have a 20 kilogram digital servo here, and just a, a simple push rod that goes through this sealer and turns the rudder back and forth. Now the designer didn't actually give away to attach the cockpit or seal it on the boat. So what I've done is use a bit of this P-shaped foam sealer here and uh, just stuck it down all the way around the inside. And then I've used uh, some M3 threaded inserts there. And then I drilled little holes in the corners of the cover so that I could just thread those right in and it seems to work really well. So it just goes on like that. Barely got any water at all inside on my first run. Now one thing to note though about a 3D printed hull is that the boat can get quite heavy uh, and this one's no exception so let's get a measurement here. I'll pull the battery and we'll get a, uh, a measurement without the battery inside. Alright so without a battery we're looking at just over two kilograms. We'll compare that to this catamaran I have which is definitely a couple inches shorter um, but you can see here it is less than one kilogram, and that's including a cooling system as well. So the 3D printed boat is definitely a lot heavier. All right, so that's all we got time for today. I hope you enjoyed this build video of our 3D printed RC boat and our initial trial run. If you did, please consider giving us a like or subscribe. It really helps me out. And as always, if you're looking for cool ideas of 3D printed RC projects like this one to build, kits, parts, or instructions on how to build them, check out our website, www.rcprinter.com. Thanks a lot.